Well, thank you to everyone for coming here this evening for the workshop on internet safety. I appreciate your time, but I most especially appreciate the time of Dr. Jane Klenner, who's here to do the presentation. Um, she did this totally voluntarily. We appreciate everything that she put into it um, to support the Safe Environment Program here at the Diocese of Scranton. So without further, further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jane Klenner for our presentation this evening. Thank you, Kathy. Phil Donahue, I barely remember who that is, but I do. All right, as Kathy said, my name is Dr. Jane Klenner. I teach at King's College. I teach in the CIS department where we do a whole lot of stuff with the internet, okay? Um, tonight, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks to keep your child safe. Now, you guys are mostly in the school situation, so you're gonna deal with parents, you're gonna talk, and you're gonna see cyberbullying. I didn't say maybe, I didn't say might, I said you're going to. You probably have already. You're going to see sexting. When I was doing some of the research for this, I was mortified, crushed, and in tears at the age with which students start to actually do sexting and cyberbullying and who's doing it. Um, it's a, a phenomena of the technology. We have to educate parents, we have to educate teens, and we have to educate ourselves as well. Now, I think when we were chatting a bit before, um, before we got started, we were talking about um, the internet, about people's use, about phones. Best thing to do, and I'm gonna show you some things to talk about with your parents, okay? Because we, parents today think they know the internet. They think that because whatever they say on Facebook stays on Facebook, not so much. Anything that goes on the web is there forever. It's digital data and anybody can get to it from anywhere. I just worked with my students uh, in the CIS 490 class. They're doing a presentation on the Internet of Things. And as we connect more and more of our things to the Internet, we have increasing areas of vulnerability, areas that people can come in, they can hack you, they can watch you, they can stalk you. And it's a scary place out there. Okay, so we're going to talk today a little bit, and you're going to, it's going to go hot when it goes into that sun, but I have to do this. Um, and, and kind of as a, a, a subtitle, I put in, this can't happen to my kid, can it? We live in northeastern Pennsylvania. Very significantly low crime compared to someplace like Philly or New York. Okay, we have fairly decent schools, even our lowest level schools you see in the real estate um, departments are not that bad, okay? I work in Wilkes-Barre, GAR, Myers, constant rivalry, kind of a, you know, you're kind of aware of their problems. Still not that bad, okay? However, and I want to, the first thing I want to show you I apologize for um, going through this so quickly. Um, I'm not give you that. Is this one here? And this this next piece is really aimed to parents, but it's something that you can talk to your parents about. Okay. And this is uh, the Megan's Law. Most of you are familiar with Leg Megan's Law. We have to do a lot of reporting. We have to be aware of who's out there. And I'm just going to, I know that just killed you, but it's okay. It's box on the screen. Um, all right, what I want to do is basically, if it's going to come here, it might not come out there. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. These people live near you. Okay? You can go on to the Megan's Law website. You can click here and view the report. You can receive updates. You can find out where people are. And you can do it by zip code. Okay, so some of you may have done this already. My question to parents 
is would you let these people into your home? Would you let those people into your school? Are they even allowed to be near your schools? No. Right? They have to be within a certain, uh, it's like 100 yards or 500 yards or something. Okay? These people can come right to your screen, right to your child's bedroom. Okay? And minimize that. Okay? Now, one of the things that I will repeat during this presentation, and this is for grandparents, for parents, for anyone that has children who are connected via any kind of network, when they're in your home, you're in control. They don't need any more friends. They've got 5,000 of them on Facebook. Okay? What they need is a parent. Your job is to keep them safe. One of the things I strongly recommend is that when children go to bed, all, it's bedtime, homework's done, all devices out of the bedroom. Nothing in the bedroom. No phone, no cell phone, no laptop, no notepad, no iPods, nothing. Okay? And I'm going to watch a short video that hopefully will run on here. Give it a minute. Can you hear that? It's buffering. It's not Justin Bieber, Why by the way. How did that set with y'all? I was watching your faces. There was not a lot of happiness coming out of there. If that computer was not in her room, she would not be exposed to that. Okay? And she's an older teen. This happens to kids that are 10, 11, 12. Okay? And you noticed, I don't know if you, how well you could see it or not, but when that camera pulled out, it was an older man there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with a student not too long ago. Without giving any names, of course, or anything, she was a college freshman standing in the hallway in tears, and I couldn't figure out why. That's what happened to her. She had sent a boyfriend a picture. Boyfriend had showed it at a party. They, they had separated, boyfriend went to a distant college far away, had it out at a party, sent it to one of those guys at the party, the guy at the party started sending her emails, Facebook posts, Instagrams. Okay, so it can happen. It can happen to your kid. It can happen to your grandchild. Okay, your grandchild was 13. Mm -hmm. Boy? Boy or girl? girl? Girl. Prime age for predators. Prime age for predators. My uh, daughter-in-law, Christmas time, 
Beautiful picture, cute little baby, no top, just a Santa hat on. All over Facebook. I'm like, you've got to get that off of there. She says, why? It's adorable. I said, yes, it's adorable. Now shut your eyes and pretend you're a 43-year-old child molester. You have to be very careful of the images that you put up there. Okay? We see babies just in diapers and all kinds of ads, and it's completely innocent. But you look at that from the mind of a 23-year-old, a 33-year-old, a 43-year-old, a 63-year-old sexual predator, and it becomes sexually enticing. So you have to be very, very careful of the images. Okay, here's a little... Um, This might be the same site. Um, and I have these sites for you. I'm, I'm also put together a website that we will link to from the diocese with this information for all of you. These are perspectives of um, chatting online, Ch how, what's, what teens think. I think it really depends on who you're talking to because if you're really close to someone and you know that and you're just kind of 
couple of points from that little video. First of all, that's teens talking about, teens that are aware of, of what's going on, that could go on on the web. Gaming, we sort of, we tend to kind of forget about gaming, and it's like, oh, mostly guys. 35% of gamers are female. They are younger. They are also all, primarily ones that are going to be stalked, okay? Gaming is a great place, the online gaming. Predators love to swim there, okay? Big shark tank for them. You heard the young man's, don't ever use your real name. Don't ever give out personal information, okay? One thing we, I wanted to just point out as a cultural uh, thing is the boys were in sweatshirts, high top, high necked vests. Young woman, very low cut. Okay, that's our culture. Our culture over sexualizes young women. Okay, so this also happens online, what they see online, where they go online. All right. Um, here's another one from Common Sense Education. Oh wait, this, I'm sorry, that's the same one. Okay, never mind, I'll skip that one. I must have missed that link. Okay. Um, I was, while I was kind of away over spring break, I started to put this PowerPoint together. I was in Charlottesville. Hold on one second. I was in Charlottesville, Virginia. I actually was literally typing uh, my resources and putting to, starting to put together this film, and this was a newscast that came on. It's almost like it followed me <laughs> as I'm doing this. It's kind of like, okay. No matter, the point is, is no matter where you go, these things are going to happen. This young man here, this is usually a, there was a video with this, I guess maybe not. 19-year-old uh, <clears throat> Jacob Meadows, Greene County, which is very near uh, Fluvanna County, down there, was arrested. Oh, there we go, sorry. Some kind of warning, great. Took longer than 30 seconds to compose. Okay, no worries. All right, and his, um, he was 19, felony threatening bodily harm over a communication device. That's cyber bullying. Threatening harm over a communication device. Okay, so it's out there, it's real. It doesn't happen just in Philadelphia. It doesn't happen just far away, but it can happen anywhere. And it is, it, as long as these kids are using, or even adults, my son, you talked about the gamers, my son played online game. We take a, a cruise to Bermuda. He's gonna go meet somebody. Now, mind you, at this time, he was 21 years old and he knew everything. He still does, okay. <laughs> But he knew everything. He goes to me, you know, I'm like, okay, well, he's gonna go meet this guy, Josh, or Zach, or whatever his name was, that they met online, and go to his house. I'm like, over my dead body, will that happen? <laughs> so I went with him, met the young man, met his parents. And then it was okay. <laughs> and they had a wonderful afternoon together. And I stayed very close in proximity to where they were. And, you know, if, but the thing is, is that you have to be on your guard because anyone at any time at any age is vulnerable. You don't know who, this, who they are. All right, here's what I say when I'm talking about um, common sense tips and tricks. Use your five senses, okay? Sight, eyes on the machines. At the end of the night, Who's paying for these phones anyway, right? Are those kids paying for the phones? Generally teenagers, are they paying for the phones? <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have them. But you're, you're the adult, you're responsible for them, you're paying for the bill. You take that phone, 
at the end of the night, you look at all those texts. Okay? You see who's texting in and out. You can also look at that on your bill. Find out what numbers are being called. Who's texting? What's, look at your data plan. Are there, if there's a big shot, there's some kind of data that's being used. Okay? That's your site. Keep things in sight. I used to treat when it was just the computer and the internet. I would always tell parents that the computer should be in a central space, dining room table, kitchen table, home office in the living room. I don't care if it looks ugly. You've got to be able to walk by and see what's on that screen all the time. If your kid is going like this when you're walking by, stop, open that screen. Look at what's going on. Look at what's on the screen. Smell. Parents, you can smell a rat. If there's somebody that's calling, if your child is starting to look withdrawn, something's wrong. Touch, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, your ear, I moved that backwards. Okay, listen to what they're saying, or not saying. More importantly, what they're not saying. I know with teenagers, how'd you, how was your day in school? Fine. What'd you do? Nothing. What'd you learn? Nothing. Okay, one word answers. Look at what they're doing. Listen to what they're saying. Okay? Reach out. Take their devices at night. Touch. Use your hands. Touch them. All right? And then a parent's sixth sense. We don't really believe in sixth sense, but common sense and your parents, your mother's your maternal instincts are going to be spot on. If you think there's something wrong with your kid, you're going to be the first one to know it. Cyberbullying, we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute or two. Cyberbullying has direct physical psychological and emotional impacts on students. And they are very visible signs if you're paying attention. And even if you miss it, if you have a good relationship with their friends, their friends may come to you. Okay? Friends are big. Peer group is big with these kids. Learn how to, to get in touch with that. Sexting is huge. Sexting um, in the... <laughs> I'll show you a slide here that just blew my mind away. All right, sexting, particularly, we have young women imitate the older women. They imitate what they see on TV. Anybody like let their children watch TV anymore? You can't even watch Disney, okay? <laughs> Sesame Street and the Muppets, I think, are still okay, though. All right, but you get these young teenage women, and all they're seeing is the Kardashians, the unreality TV, okay? There's no absolute talk about womanhood, about feminism, about what it means to be a woman, particularly what it means to be a Catholic woman in today's society. And people, we have that edge. You have that beautiful, beautiful baptismal promise that you can work with your kids with, okay? And remember, you know what? They're gonna make a mistake. We did. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time in the principal's office, okay? They're going to do that. They're going to fall. We pick them up. Not a problem. But we need to talk to them about their body, about how it's represented in culture. And I'm telling you guys, if you didn't buy, if they didn't buy the short, short skirts, okay, they'd have to lower the hems because they'd be all on the shelf. So it's a matter of what we permit our kids to do. I talk to my parents, I teach CCD. I said, people, they come to mass, short shorts are not reverent. But this culture leads them to this. And it leads them to think that sexting is okay. And again, younger, the younger the child, the more innocent they are, the more naive they are about where their data goes. By that I mean the images and the text. Okay. Sexting. Percent. 5.5 percent of age 12, 12 year old children sent or received a sexual text. Age 12. I don't know about you, but that blows my mind. Okay. Age 12 is what grade? Eighth grade? Seventh, eighth grade? Yes. Seventh, eighth grade. That is confirmation years, people. Great time to bring this into 
the curriculum to talk about not just the body as a temple, not just the theology of the body, but how technology is used. Okay, how do we use technology? Let's do this from the Catholic perspective. Talk to them about the Catholic perspective. This is 12 years old. Males, 19% have received, which means that the girls are sending them this stuff. Okay? They think this is how to, they, they get a guy, how they get that guy to like me, I'm gonna send them a, a suggestive or provocative or sexual picture. Okay? Age 17, the sample of 5,500 people, 26% of those were, were 17 years old. This leads to active sexual behavior. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. I've got to get the microphone. Hold on. I've got to do my job here. Jane, is, is sexting primarily the transferal of pictures? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's and it's also a video. Video, pictures, all these cameras. If you look at your camera, look at your little um, eye tablet there. All right? You can do video. Okay? So it's video. It's pictures. It can start out with suggestive texts. You saw in that first video that we talked about, or we showed you, where the young woman was, I, I want to do something very special for you. There was something that led to that, okay? And so it may have been, obviously this was not somebody at school, but it might have been somebody that was on a Facebook or an Instagram or Snapchat with her. Gosh, you're beautiful. I'd like to see more of you, okay? Imagine that. That happens, okay? There's a lead-in. There's a hook. There's something that brings the girl to do this. It's a boyfriend. It's just back in the day, in the back of the 57 Chevy, our grandparents, okay? If you love me, okay? They need to understand what love is. We need to teach them that early. We need to teach that in school and in religious education, okay? Those numbers are staggering. This was a Google search that I did. And I scrolled down to the ones I really wanted to make a point with. <laughs> but sexting, how to send sexy texts and messages, Cosmo. Sexting by Wikipedia, which was, okay. 50 example sexting ideas you can use right now. It's a how to, okay? Urban Dictionary just explains it. These 25, 25 sex quotes and sexting examples, it's there. You type in sexting, this is what comes up. Okay? How easy is that for our students and our young people to learn this? They see it on television, and there is nothing in our culture that is counter to, countering that. And cyberbullying is a big thing. I'm not in any way minimizing that, because that's, it's, but those numbers are dropping, by the way, which is good news. This is dangerous. This is very dangerous. Missing children, this is how they go. Okay? Let me see if I can find that. What if I have it on here? Um, all right. Repeat, this is another tips kind of frame here, or slide. Take five to 10 minutes at the end of every day. And you know what? If you go over it with your kid, they're gonna be really paying attention to what they go, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't text stuff like that. Because my mom reads my texts, or my dad reads my texts. Review the apps on the phone. We didn't talk at all about that, but you know what I mean by an app, okay? How many of you, y'all have your phones, right? Mine's charging over here. <laughs> I think I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 apps. Okay. So there's all kinds of apps. Mine are like Divine Office, the Dante, the Bible. <laughs> 
You can edit that in. <laughs> All right, but you've got to watch with apps because a lot of them are online game apps. Look at where that data is going. How much are they taking up? Make sure that they are not inappropriate in any way. Okay? I still do not think that anybody needs to be on Snapchat or Instagram. Okay? Don't think that at all. Um, make sure you know what each one of those does. Approve it, disprove it. They don't like it, take the phone. They can live without it all. Okay? Check your phone bills for unusual charges. Also, the unusual data usage. Things start spiking, your data starts spiking, something's happening. Movies, videos, pictures. Take five minutes to talk, about, to, talk to, about, to talk to your child about these things, okay? Um, get them to understand that it's not just because it's there that they have to use it. That they don't have to answer every text that comes in. And they have to develop that sixth sense like the young woman spoke about in the earlier video. But you've got to kind of know if it's, you know, it's kind of hinky, you let it go. And then, as I tell parents all the time, be a parent, not their friend. They don't need any more friends. They've got 6,000 on Facebook, okay? You be the parent. They only have two of those. And take five minutes of your time, sit with them, and set every social media to private, okay? It's still hackable. You can still get to it. You've got a GPS locator on your phone all the time. So be careful that those are off. Anybody can ping them and find them, okay? All right, this is uh, Facebook, just in case you didn't know where these things were. Facebook, settings, security, general, they have all of these different things. There's the apps in Facebook that you can set to receive or not receive, okay? Login alerts. I set, shut that off because it's a distractor. They're sitting in school, ping, 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 ping. That's their Facebook going. They're going to go like this. They're not going to be paying attention. So even that's not, maybe not bad, but it's, if you're teaching, it's really annoying. Um, but just make sure that the social media is set to where, you, where it's private. And I was going to have everybody just set theirs, but we don't have that. All right, cyberbullying. They can't hurt you, and they can't get you from inside the computer, can they? What do we know about cyberbullying? Anybody have any, you guys from schools, any examples? Anybody have any good stories they'd like to share? It's probably. Hold on. Phil's on the way here. Cyberbullying is probably the most calls that we get in our office. In your offices? Central office um, of the schools, diocesan schools. Um, Just for anybody else watching? Sure. More, more than the other kind of bullying or anything like that, most of what comes to us is cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. As young as third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. Yeah, you can shut that off and pass it around. All right, cyberbullying, there has been a great deal of time, effort, and money put into it. Homeland Security is involved with it. The NSA is involved with it. Um, our diocese is involved with it, okay? So we have spent a lot of time, and it's been good money invested. Cyberbullying is decreasing. The numbers are coming down with that. Not far enough, but it's a start, okay? Cyberbullying is mean and it is invasive because we have cell phones, pads, notepads, notebooks, airbooks, laptops, home computers, games. Okay? There are just a myriad of ways that we can get to. Is that still on? Okay, sorry. This is, um, and we, I've showed you this once already, I think, but here's cyberbullying, and I'll show you this again later. It's another link to it. But here is a uh, cyberbullying research center, and there are tons. 
what to do about teen sexting, how parents can build resilience. Resilience is something that we need to talk more about. It's uh, more from the psychological standpoint. People are going to get bullied. What are we going to do about it? Resilience is that particularly you have that beauty that being in a Catholic school, you can talk to them about God. And you can talk about God will always love you. You are not alone. God is your shield. You have your faith. Don't worry about that. You are a beloved daughter or son of God. That is something that's extremely beautiful that we can use in our schools. We can't use that necessarily in public schools. So that is a gift, people. Um, there are books, there's a blog, there's presentations, there's law, there's research. There are resources. There's some statistics, okay? 2016, cyberbullying data, okay? Coming back up, victimization, because it is a victim. People say it's a victimless crime, it is not. It's like prostitution is a victimless crime, it is not. Um, there's some resources for you out here. These are great resources, and all of these places except I think Homeland Security, um, have presenters. They have printouts. They have things you can use. Um, cell phones, the kids have them from the time they're about four, which I have no idea why. I, I can't for the love of their money figure that one out. What, who does a four-year-old four need to call? Other than Santa and Grandma, okay? So that's um, one example. This is Megan's story foundation. You want, a, you want a tearjerker to tell your parents this is it. This is Megan's story. And it's very, very sad. His name was Josh Evans. He was 16 years old. 16 and he was hot. This is Megan. Um, mom, mom, look at him. Josh should contact Megan through her MySpace page. So you know how old this is. My, MySpace has been off for quite, quite a number of years. And he wanted to be added as a friend. Yes, he's cute, Tina told her daughter, but do you know who he is? No, but he's really hot. Can I add him, please, please? And so she did. And she became familiar with MySpace. He said he was born in Florida, recently moved to O'Fallon, which I guess is where they were from. Okay. And this is how she expressed who she was. She loved swimming. He talks about what a great kid she was. But things were going exceptionally well. She'd shed 20 pounds. She was down to 175. She was five foot, five and a half inches tall. She just started eighth grade. Immaculate Conception, okay, eighth grade. She was on the volley team, volley team of, um, at the end, all of these positives, Tina ended a, decided to end a friendship with a girlfriend who lived down the street from them. The girls had spent much of seventh grade alternating between friends and the next day not being friends. How many times does that happen? What happens is how this child reacts. On Sunday, October 15th, Megan received a puzzling and disturbing message from Josh. I don't want to be friends with you anymore because I've heard that you're not very nice to your friends. Okay. And then, this is, um, Tina was worried, the cyber world, 70 million users. At any rate, as Megan's 14th birthday approached, she wanted to have another chance at MySpace. Okay, Monday, October 16th, my birthday, by the way, um, when she came home, she asked her mother to log into spot, uh, to MySpace, see if Josh responded. She, had to, she was in a hurry. Meg was sobbing. And the story is, Megan is, she comes home, and she's uh, heartbroken. And this is the part where we talk about resilience. Tina and Ron saw a grief counselor. They have... Um, 
They said, you have a shitty rest of your life. The world would be better a place without you. This is one of the lines that's used a lot. The, the world will be better off without you. We don't need you. No one loves you. Okay? People are telling these kids this on MySpace. Tina, I mean not Tina, but Megan kills herself. It happens that the neighbor down the street informed the Myers that Josh never existed. There was no Josh. This hot, hot kid did not exist. It was created by adults, a family on their block. They were the parents of that former girlfriend. The parents did this. They went, and the single mother she had encouraged to join in the joke. Mm -hmm. One minute she was, one minute she was on. and then the other minute she was So it's like teenage girls. It was, it was her, her parents that decided to... Yeah, so it was her parents... That decided to... It's not on, hold on. Push in the little button until it turns green. It was her parents that decided to say, okay, we're going to make this up and manipulate... So Megan and this other friend, they're friends, best friends till seventh grade, then they have a fight, as teenage girls do, and then they go back to being friends, and then they're not friends, and so they create, the parents create this joke, this Josh, to kind of play up to Megan. And then at the end, they kind of crush her with a nobody wants you, the world's better without you, Megan kills herself. And she wanted to get M Megan to, f this is what they say, she wanted to get Megan to feel like she was liked by a boy and let everyone know this was a false, my space and have everybody laugh at her. I don't feel their intentions were for her to kill herself, but that's what happened. You can't know what's going to be in the mind, of, particularly of a teenage girl. Okay? You got it. All right. So this is parents, but there are teenagers doing the same thing. You don't know who's out there. You don't know who's controlling this. You don't know who they are. You should know everybody's friends. Every friend that's on that Facebook page, that Instagram following, the LinkedIn, the kids don't usually use LinkedIn, but Twitter accounts. As a parent, go through them all. Know every single one of them. If you don't know them, get rid of them. Just get rid of them. Okay? So long story short, that was a very tragic example of how People can get hurt, okay? And that, it's just sad that, and you know, back in the day, people were mean too. There were bullies back in the day when we went to high school, okay? I had four brothers. I didn't have a real big problem with this. <laughs> All right. But there was always that kid that people made fun of, the person that wasn't quite the cheerleader, well, now you can get millions of people right away. You have a question? No. I okay. Know, I'm, I'm just breathing deep. Breathing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next one is net cetera. I forget what I put up here, but. Oh, this is, yeah, this is a pretty decent little thing here if it will play. Someone 
Being online is part of your life, okay? And this is what we have to deal with. It is part of their lives. It's part of every teen's life, every middle school student's life. And unfortunately, lower grades, primary school kids are, have to deal with this too because everything is connected. The internet is not a safe place. What you create, what you put out there digitally stays there forever. It will be found by somebody. Don't ever try to run for president and put stupid stuff out there. This is uh, Net Smarts, Missing and Exploited Children. This is another. What we think is funny can often hurt someone very deeply. Young men and women at this age are very self-conscious about their hair, their makeup, their body, the image. And again, I would say that the best way to talk about this is to understand this from a Catholic perspective that they are God's son and daughter, and that they need to respect themselves and each other. We talk about resilience. One of the things that we are working now in this area is a thing called resilience. The weed that, the reed that is bent does not break. Anybody that is cyber bullied, they need to be counseled. They need to talk to their priest, to their pastor, their confessor, their spiritual director, uh, a psychological counselor preferably a Christian or Catholic one, because they're going to understand that. And what we want them to do is come back from it. Yeah, so what? They're picking on me. Yeah, sticks and stones. Remember when we grew up? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt. That's kind of what we want to build in them. They don't have that anymore. They are told that they are perfect and they are beautiful, and then they meet the world, and people don't share that or they find something to pick on. So we have to be very careful of what we're doing. And I think that this title is so perfect. I didn't think. They don't think. They don't think of the effect. They think of, okay, this is fun. Let me pick on this person. Let me make fun of them but they don't think about how that person feels, how they internalize it, what happens to them. They don't think about like what happens with Megan, who was so crushed that she killed herself. And there's children doing it all the time. They just don't report it as much. 
because it's not news. First of all, journalism, if it bleeds, it leads. But this is old news, cyberbullying is not new. But it is, it's new for each and every child that experiences it. And in their world, they're the only one that's going through that. And the most important thing we can do is make sure that they know that they are not alone. Parents don't have a manual for this. Parents don't understand that it can be their child. They don't understand that kids are mean out there now and again. What are they talking about when they're cyberbullying? I found it interesting that there was a difference between the East Coast and West Coast. I know this is a hard slide to read. This big, large blue area, which takes up 50% of the East Coast, 39.6% of the West Coast, this is name calling, harassment. You're ugly. Who told you that you, should, you were smart? Who picked those glasses for you? Wow, you certainly hang out with the worst friends. I hate those shoes. I hate you. You're ugly. You're stupid. Nobody likes you. The world would be better off without you. That's this. East Coast, 26.1%. West Coast, 33.8% is relationship drama. Teenagers, <sighs> Romeo and Juliet. Okay, it's drama. I hate you. I saw you with another girl. All that kind of stuff. Okay, that's cyberbullying. Or it can be also that sexting you saw that. Send me a picture now, or I'm going to put it out on the web. Okay, those kinds of things. 12.4% in the East Coast, and ironically, 12.2, very similar. East Coast versus West Coast is body image. And then 11% and 14% is threats. We had a case out in Tunkhannock not too long ago, a couple years back, I think. 16-year-old girl threatening, sexting. And her mother was fine with it, by the way. I don't think, she's 16 now. She might have been younger then. She was caught sexting. They were getting her out of school. We call it suspending, suspending school. The mother sued the school district for t sending her daughter home. Okay, this is the way they're thinking. Not particularly brilliant in my book. All right, I know this is really hard but, to read, but we have the, th the theological aspects of cyberbullying. There are natural things that we know about the human body, such as water and air are good for the body, the soul, the will, social nature. We ought to be able to have friends, join clubs. The aspects of human knowledgeable, knowable by reason, material, body, soul, spiritual. We are social creatures. The internet and social media plays to this part of our humanness. We are social beings by our very nature. We have community. We have congregation in church. We have school groups. Girls want to be cheerleaders, boys want to be on the football team. You want to join. What happens is cyberbullying, cyber stalking, it, it extinguishes that desire. So it goes up against that theological um, tenet that we have up there. Okay? Additionally, it prevents social engagement. You get burned on social media, you don't want to go back out there. And remember, it's part of our life from that last video. It is part of their lives. And so when they are bullied, when they are stalked, when they are involved in sexting, this takes them out of that social nature. And it makes them want to hide. We talk about social media. It is, un, it is invasive, it is unregulated, and the sin is that it is a public slander of the person. So even if you are posting just to that person, friends of friends can see it, okay? It can be out there. It is damaging. It is damaging to the self-image. It is damaging to the person. So we talk about cyberbullying as being the event, and social media is the platform. It violates our socialness, as reputation is one of the things we bring to other people. I am this person. 
I am a professor at King's College. I am a Catholic. I am something or other. When you have people on the, who are cyberbullying, they are taking that identity away from you. They are taking that reputation that you may have worked on and destroying it in a very, very public manner. All right? And it also, because we are now isolated, we are unable to engage in social relationships. And it deprives us of the right to even begin those relationships. And I have to thank my friend, Dr. Chris Carr of Misericordia, who helped me to formulate that. He teaches theology. So when you think about that, there are theological aspects of cyberbullying. It's not just about the technology. Okay. Signs that your child or your grandchild or your nephew or your student is being bullied. Teachers, you may be the first ones to see this. Okay, if you're teaching, you're going to know that student. Oh, she's usually so bright and happy. What's the matter? Something, you know, those questions you have to, is there something, everything okay at home? Yeah, everything's fine at home. Get to that point. Are you online? Go out there and see if, you, if you're friends with them. I will, for 98% uh, of the time, will not friend any of my students. I will, and they're, they're older, they're over 18. But I do not want that issue of authority in the classroom to be at all damaged by the friendship online. LinkedIn, when they've graduated, fine, no problem. Okay? But if you suspect something, You've got to do a little investigating. You're not, so, you're not stalking. You can make notes, OK? But you've got to look at that. You've got to talk to the parents. You have parent-teacher meetings still, I think, right? So do parent-teacher meetings. Say, I've noticed that you know, Rebecca's a little more quiet than usual. Is everything OK? Have you noticed anything different? Is there a health issue I need to be aware of? You can ask that more in the primary and secondary school. I can't ask those questions in college, OK? Although you know me. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. They will be withdrawn, fearful, quiet. Maybe they've started reading a book instead of being online. That's a dead giveaway, right? Um, I might go through, go through a little bit of this, but there's a nice, a neat quiz online here. I'm just going to show you a couple of the questions if it opens up and for us. Again, this is that Cyberbullying Research Center where I got a lot of. Homeland Security also has a great bit. Cyberbullying is just a problem in the United States. Is that true or false? False. Oh, I thought that said next. Correct. There have been a number of recent studies all over the place. Okay. Good. I have a smart class. Where's the next button? There we go. Okay. Most targets are cyberbullying. Tell an adult about their experience, parent or teacher. False. Okay. Let's see. Correct. According to Bullying Beyond the Schoolyard, preventing and responding to cyberbullying, only about 40% of the middle school victims of cyberbullying told their parents. Less than 30 told a teacher. Fewer than, but the numbers are much more improved. Four years ago, it was 15%. So things are getting better. We are doing better with education here. Parents are starting to realize that this is a problem. Teachers are starting to realize this. Victims of cyberbullying are at an increased risk for, tra for traditional bullying, victimization, substance use, and social problem, or school problems. Let's see, we'll try true. You guys are getting 100 so far. True is a smart group. 
According to an article published by the journal Deviant Behavior, these victims, and you'll notice that the drug, the substance abuse is one of the number one uh, side effects, the results or outcomes of cyberbullying, of any kind of bullying, by the way. All right? So that's just a few that you can go over with parents. You can um, take it yourself. Go through a couple, you know, a couple, two, three of those things and see where you, where you stand with that. Because it's interesting of what we think about. Our preconceived notions may not be correct. And I'm going to go back to that resilience piece, is here's where we start to talk about that resilience. We have to build that resilience in kids. It's OK to be cyberbullied. It's OK. Just shut off the phone. Stay away from the internet. Block that person. We have that feature now. Phones, you can block a caller. Take a number, block it. Facebook, block it, and you report those things. You teach your kid, report those things to Facebook, okay? Report them to the police. It is a crime. Cyberbullying is a crime, okay? Gaming environments, it's not your dad's Super Mario. All right, and I showed you the League of Legends. This is a good example of um, this company does a lot with reporting and allowing teams to report and it tries to really clamp down on who's, who's out there and they keep good track of, of what's going on. Um, but they have 100 million monthly players. Most of them are between the ages of 19 and 25. And their content includes blood, fantasy violence, and suggestive, strong language, suge suggestive themes, and the use of alcohol and tobacco. What does this do to kids? When they play it, when they immerse themselves in these fantasy games, they become real. Their behavior changes. Okay? That was basically my point on that one. And I can't. Okay. Good, I can figure some things out here real quick. I look better. Don't I look slimmer though? And this, this NetSmarts is another really, really great site. Um, and if you look at this, we'll take a minute just to kind of look at this itself. Um, online gaming can help children. It helps them develop their creativity and their problem solving. In some cases, also their eyesight, kinesthetic responses. All right? But um, there are the downsides, so you have to remember that. 72% of teens, both male and female, 13, ages 13 to 17, play video games. More than half of these has made new friends online. Going back to my son, online gaming, met this guy in Boston, every New Year's, they get together, okay? So yeah, there can be some positive um, outcomes, some positive friendships, but you have to be careful, all right? And I'm just gonna take a minute to look at this NetSmarts workshop area here. This is a wonderful resource, really, really wonderful. Um, it's got things for parents and guardians, educators, law enforcement, teens. Um, I forget what NS teens means. Not quite teens, I guess. And kids. Okay. It has videos. It has kids talking about things to them, you know, to, to other kids. It has handouts. It talks to you about children as victims, identity theft. Okay. Identity theft, believe it or not, is a problem with kids because they have no credit rating. If somebody can get their identity and start a credit, they've ruined your kid's credit before, you can, before they've even started. All they need is a social security number, an address, a name. Okay? All right, so those are some of the really cool places that are out there. NetSmart's one of the, one of the best, I would say. All right. Parents, 
They have to understand that they are not alone. Just like we said that the kids are not alone, parents are not alone either. Strong support from the school, from the diocese with the safety, our safety committee, um, the schools, any of those kinds of places. Parents need to be able to get these resources. They need to know that other parents have these issues. Encourage groups. Do you have, anybody have in their schools a, um, like an IITS or a computer club? Any of those kinds of things? Because computer clubs can start the education process for the kids. And they can do a presentation for their parents. Okay. Um, get NetWise is one. And connect safely. Um, Is a really good one too. And there's one I don't know why I took it off here, but there was Homeland Security also does a really good um, cybersecurity issue with kids. I do know it's, it's a building. There we go. New parental controls are great, but they don't let your mom and dad off the hook. That's what that was the kind of thing I wanted you to see there. All right. Um, <laughs> My son um, is <laughs> quite good with computers. I don't know where he gets it from. But I can remember when he was young, we would set the parent parental controls, and he'd go in and undo them. And he would figure, every time I changed my password, he'd figure it out. Okay? So you, you have to be like one step ahead. Okay? Facebook uses technology and people to thwart revenge porn, which is our cyberbullying and sexting kind of thing. Congress takes away consumer privacy protections. What can you do? Most Android devices, and this is true, they are working on it, however, um, they are not up to date safety wise. Very easy to hack. Okay. And again, there's some tips and advice here, some guides and other resources for you to use. And some other resources here, the SPCC, Indicators of Crime and Safety, School Crime and Safety, some white papers, Can Social Media Save Kids' Lives, A Guide to Sexting and Victims Resource. And these will be available to you on the web as well. All right, two-minute drill. That's what I do with my students all the time. You get a minute or two to think about it. And then we'll pass the microphone around. But I want to hear, we'll start with you, because you're, you work for her. <laughs> what did you learn today in our cyberbullying presentation? I think how easy it is to, uh, for someone to get in there, into, you know, into, into cyberspace and pretend to be somebody else and take people unawares. I think I learned how important it is that parents and adults uh, really, really uh, be involved in what their children and students and relatives, whether they be young or old, are doing on the internet. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that concerned me is that we put together these things and there's four people here. To your point that parents do think that they know everything that there is to know about the internet. I think the takeaway for me is the website, are the websites and the resources because I think we have to find a way. They're not, they're clearly not going to show up to the meetings. This is what we see in the schools when we have them in the schools, when we have them, and I'm sure public schools have the same, the same issue when they do. So we have to find ways to get the resources into parents' hands so that when they're home at night, they can go on these websites and look at these things and, and inform themselves. What I have seen in my job is it's not important until it happens to their child. 
in one way or the other. And then they're all upset, they're all up in arms, understandably so, and they don't know what to do and they don't know where to turn. And I just think of all of the times we have put this information out there for them, and I, I think we need to try to think of other ways to get the information in, into parents' hands. Um, the best thing that I think I took away from it tonight was we have a very important card that until you spoke of it today, the Catholic card. It's important to us because this is who we are. This is against our teaching. We have to make them aware of how important it is. And it's a good fallback. I mean, if they learn it and they learn it and they learn it, muscle retention, they're going to say, I have somebody that cares. He may not be visible to you, but he's in me. And I never thought of that until you said like the theological tenet and the Catholic, it's against our religion. It's against who we are. We need to use that. So thank you. I took that. Kathy, just give us the <laughs> Thank you. I was very pleased to hear that the cyberbullying rates are starting to decrease. So that for me was a, a positive thing to take away from the presentation. Um, and certainly not to minimize that there are a lot of issues that we all need to deal with, whether we're educators, whether we're human service professionals, whether we're parents. I think the part about resilience is extremely important. Uh, resilience is something that I have always been fascinated with from a number of perspectives in terms of child development. What is it and what are those characteristics that some children seem to have almost innately that results in their being able to withstand certain things that happen to them in their lives? And I think maybe um, to piggyback on what Kathy was saying, one of the things that maybe we, we can focus on with parents is building that resilience. If it's sometimes threatening for parents to hear about statistics or think about these sorts of things happening to them, but it should certainly not be threatening at all for them to think about how can you develop, help your child to develop more self-confidence, help them to be a stronger individual, which will benefit them at, at any point in their lives. So I think there's so much here that we can take away, that we can look at, and hopefully we can share with our stakeholders, with our, um, our families, and be able to assist them in uh, trying to develop these, these kinds of protective services. Great, great. I think you guys all did a, you passed your test. You can, you can move on to the next grade. Um, I find that this is like evangelization. You gotta keep doing it. Gotta keep bringing the word, okay? Parents need to hear that. You might want to send home a monthly newsletter, a cyber newsletter. Okay, you can do something that doesn't guarantee they're going to read it, but you, you've sent it home. And when they get up in arms and complain about th th what happens, well, we sent this home. Were you not reading it? <laughs> okay, we can talk about these things. We can um, add modules, start to look at our curriculums. I know there's like, oh, there's no more room for anything. But I think that if we can, uh, maybe even a, a club, a computer club that talks about this stuff. We said that April was our safety awareness month. There's also a month, I think it's October, but I'm not sure, um, where cyberbullying is the theme of the month. And that's a good time to tie into those tons of resources that'll be out there. Do some activities, okay? Have a demonstration, get speakers. You can always call me I'm, after soon as graduation's over. Um, <laughs> But, you know, get these things out. School board meetings, they're going to come and complain about, you know, something, right? Well, we're going to take 10 minutes. We're going to tell you about cyberbullying, and then we're going to start the meeting. Okay? So we have to be creative. It's there, and as you said, and as they said in the, the video you saw, it is part of their lives. It will always be a part of their lives. And as we move into the Internet of Things, how many of you have a Fitbit that you use? Nobody? Okay, obviously I don't, right? <laughs> all right. So Fitbits, your cars, all of those sensors, all of that is data. 
It's all geo, uh, geo, uh, GPS, geographic information systems. We know where everybody is all the time. We know what they're wearing, what they're doing, who they're with, what they're eating. Okay, Kathy and I went to Papa's. Um, for lunch, it pops up on my screen. You're at Papa's, can you rate this restaurant? Take a picture. No, I'm just gonna eat, okay? Thank you. All right, this is the world. It is invasive, it is ubiquitous, and it is on all the time. And so just to kind of recap real quickly, take the phones away at night. No devices in the bedrooms. That's when sexing them. You go to bed, they're still up, okay? Check the phones, physically take the phones. Look at the texts, who are they from? Look at their Facebook page, who are their friends? Be nosy, they're gonna hate it. They are gonna hate you. But as my mom used to say, she had 12 kids. If, I'm, if you're not mad at me, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> All right? And do that, remind them that they are Catholic. Remind them that this is against our teaching. This is not how we treat each other. This is not how we treat our bodies. Just because it's part of the culture does not mean it has to be part of your life. And yeah, they're going to hate you because they want to do it. everything that everybody else does. Piercings, tattoos, immodest dress. They want to do that because that's what the culture shows them to do. But we have to model the proper behavior for them and we have to instruct them in that. Okay. Um, we were gonna do that, but there's like, there's only four of us and we've talked about it all night. Any other questions? I think we could wrap it up because we were gonna go to 8.30, but I think it's eight that's kind of, you guys all look pretty tired. <laughs> You better give me something I know. Okay, get ready. What exactly is, and I've heard of them, Snapchat and the other oh, thing? Snapchat and Instagram. I'm sorry. Instagram. Snapchat and Instagram are two, push that till it goes off because then Mike will come get us. Okay, Snapchat is pictures. You take a picture, it goes up, and allegedly it goes away. But they are finding that it's not going away. Instagram is very similar. You pop things up and you send a picture or a couple of pictures or a video and you comment and then people like it or it's kind of a quick, here I am, but here's this beautiful. Because it's, you have that app to do. It's, it's an app, okay. correct. Okay. All right, they have Skype on their phones. They have FaceTime on their phones. Mm -hmm. They are connected in ways that are just mind blowing. Like who has time for this in my world? <laughs> you know, give them more homework. That's the idea. Um, give them books. There was never this problem with books. Any other questions? Did you get enough information? Too much? <laughs> All right. Okay. So there's a value to it. And if you, like, um, there was somebody that didn't come to the King's one. If you want me to come talk to your schools or your churches or your parishes or your CCDs, just give me a call. Kathy has my number. Probably everybody here has my number. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm done. Thank you. All right, I'm going to shut all this technology down. I thank you all for coming out on this beautiful night. You could have been fishing. <laughs>